Hello Starseeds, this is my Kuhu Starseed Tara and today we'll be doing something a little different. I thought that I would just do um, another way of providing a reading or relaying a message to you from my guides and your guides. Um, this is something that I've done before and I've been thinking about doing this just because um, it's something that I feel everyone can kind of um, take and go with it. Um, they can do it on their own, basically. They don't need to have somebody else do it for them. If you are a person who likes journaling, this is something that is going to come to you very, very intuitively. And so I just wanted to do this to offer you with another way of uh, relaying a message that you need to hear. Today's message is also focusing on um, a spiritual check-in, a spiritual path check-in. Um, I've done one before with career check-ins and I like doing that because oftentimes we're so fixated on doing things and getting things done that we forget to stop and even look at our checklist of things to do or check in with ourselves and how we're feeling and so um, I wanted to do this video for that purpose. I also wanted to do this video at this time because I think we are officially into the first week of our Mercury retrograde and uh, for those who have just been very aware of how uh, everything has been going around in um, their environment, they kind of just want to know, okay, where, where am I now, right? Because we all know that Mercury retrograde affects our communication, um, the way that we travel or we commute, and our relationships. That's a huge part of who we are is our relationships, how we get from one place to another, and um, in between. And so the in-between is what we really get to process because um, we are always thinking about, again, um, getting from point A to point B. Even our communication, when we're talking to somebody, we're thinking about, okay, how do we convey this to someone so that they understand clearly what we're trying to say. And... Um, Again, as we are even speaking and we're walking, we're not thinking about, you know, the things that's happening in between. We're not thinking about how our actions are actually being demonstrated or being played out. And so we only become aware of what we've done after the fact. And so I wanted to do more of these kind of spiritual check-ins for those who need it um, a lot of times. Again, we're so fixated on just getting from point A to point B that we don't even realize, you know, the the journey, the actual journey itself is the lesson. And so um, that's kind of where I want to do this. And I wanted to do it by way of this process because I wanted to just take a break from tarot reading for a little bit. Um, I have been in the past few days um, kind of stuck and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's another way for me to um, do readings, provide readings for you all. I've also been looking at a lot of readers who have found their way of providing readings by intuition and discovering um, some methods and some divination tools to just work for them. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm very open to the different types of divination um, tools. And I'm actually pretty drawn to um, the way that some readers use charms and do bone casting. And so that's something that's always been in, of interest to me because growing up, I've collected a lot of charms. Um, and so that may be even something that I might have coming soon. I am not entirely sure yet. Um, another thing too is candles. I've always been into um, lighting candles and I just remember doing this um, as, as a child before I even knew what it was. Just going into a dark room, lighting the candle and just staring at the candle and um, I can't remember if I ever channeled any visions but 
Uh, that's something that I would just do, and I just kept doing this for a period of time. Um, also, during that time, I came across uh, pendulums that I didn't know exactly how pendulums worked, but I was just so fascinated with it, and I and I remember trying to work with a pendulum, but I eventually gave up on that and the um, candles as well as ruin casting. I used to also be very interested in ruin casting, but um, I just didn't know how it worked. And so now that I'm this far into my spiritual journey, I'm kind of having like these epiphanies and realizing how it comes full circle. And so something that I want to reinvestigate at this period in my spiritual journey too is trying to figure out what my divination tools are and I've experimented with pendulums and I realized like pendulums are really a tricky thing and so I kind of want to take a break from that too and not be so fixated on that um, I eventually want to um, again get back into candle readings um, and then, of course, with the process that I'm doing today, it's automatic writing. And I found that when I did it, the last time that I did it, it was very, very effective for me. And so for me, automatic writing is just kind of like the written version of channeling um, channeling your clears. And so it's, it's like everything that you pick up on, you can put down onto a piece of paper. And so... I've done this with also photo readings where I look at a photo and then I write things down because oftentimes it takes me a while to put things um, together into words where I can capture it. And and um, when I'm talking a lot too, I often forget like even what I said, I'll even sometimes repeat things a lot and not realize that I'm doing it. And so writing is just kind of like a more concrete way of... Um, providing a reading a reading for for people um and it seems very like arbitrary right it seems like oh is this is this um considered a reading or is this just kind of like a um a writing exercise and to be honest um i've also done this for some of my um theoretical papers when i was in school and I didn't realize that this is what it was or how um, psychics or even how um, people with gifts practiced but um, it was it's so interesting how it just comes out full circle where even though I did this back in grad school now it's coming up again in in my spiritual practice and um, another interesting story with that is that in grad school I was investigating um, concepts of like ritual in, in artwork and so I created this whole installation I was an art student I created this whole installation of like uh, these ritual markings that I called um, moon markings and so or ritual markings of a moon goddess and um, I was just so fixated on creating these like menstrual marks uh, relating to some of my trauma and I was doing these things as a form of healing and um, I just kind of like replayed these things over and over and over again only to get to where I am now in my spiritual journey to realize like oh my gosh all of these things are coming back full circle and so I share this because a lot of the things that we're already doing in our daily lives can actually help us into um, rediscovering our spiritual gifts and you know, as we all know, the our spiritual paths, it's not linear, it's actually spiral. And so we these things come back up at different um, times in our life, uh, reoccur again in our in our lives and in different parts of our lives for us to um, use as a resource and to also help us to evolve. And so um, anyways, enough about that. So automatic writing, it may be something that you all may be interested in. And this is just one way that um, I want to um, help you all find messages that help you on your journey. And so for today, the theme will be, um, the theme will be spiritual path or spiritual journey check-ins. And how we're going to pick, um, our readings is by numbers and so I'll be drawing 
random numbers for you all um, and then you'll pick those numbers and then you'll go into the description box look for your number then into your timestamp and then I will provide your reading where the timestamp is located okay so without further ado we will get started all right so in this bag i have um, numbers that i'm just gonna pull some numbers i have 26 29 i don't know if you guys can see it i'll do four Three. Okay. So your numbers are twenty six, twenty nine, ten, and three. And what you can do is at this moment you can pause the video. So you can meditate on what number you would like to receive a reading from. What you can do is close your eyes and ask your spirit guides, your master guides, the ascended masters, your ancestors, and the angels to assist you in this task, to deliver you a message that will help you along your spiritual journey, to ask your guides, your higher self, to check in with you about your spiritual path. And when you are ready, you can go into the description, look for your number, and click on the timestamp. Alright, so this reading is for number 26. And how we're going to do this is, um, usually I just try to channel what message is there for you, and I'll start writing, okay? And then once I'm done writing, I will kind of sum up everything that I've picked up from, okay? This year.
So I'm just going to stop it right here. And some of the things that I got were um, Young, Marriage, Love, Ground, Earth, Taurus, Don't Worry, You Are Okay, Await a Message, Look for Signs, You Are Ready, Do Not Be Afraid, At This Point, It Is Your Journey, Look to a Mentor, Someone You Can Trust, Do Not Be Afraid of Loss, loss of a loved one protecting you you are not alone do not feel like you are doing this alone toxic purging toxicity bad habits friends social group overwhelming you are protected okay so number 26 it seems that in your spiritual journey or in your spiritual path at this moment you are Feeling alone and what you need to do is to feel confident about where you are. You are at the tail end of something that you are trying to purge, something bad, and you're trying to purge it. And so um, for you, you are right where you are supposed to be. 2020 is going to be better. 2020 is going to get better. Okay, 2020 is going to get better. Um, let's see. It may even, what I'm also getting is that your guides or whoever is helping you may be family members. Family members are um, helping you in your certain, in your situation right now. And so in your spiritual journey, in your healing journey, you are um, being looked after. You're being looked after. And so look for those signs. Look for those signs to... Um, Look for those signs to get a deeper understanding of what you need to do to help you get out of this de depression, to help you get out of this dark hour. All right. Don't feel like you have to be tied down. Don't feel like you have to be tied down to the responsibility of others. Don't feel like how somebody else responds to you is your responsibility. You are currently purging those toxic relationships. And trust your gut. Trust your gut about the people you are coming across. It is okay to create boundaries. It is okay to feel weary around the people around you if you feel that they are not authentically there for the best interest of your of you and this friendship. Especially in this time of need. Okay. So those who pick number 26... This is your reading. This is your spiritual check-in. Trust your gut. You have just evolved from a very tough situation. And now this next level of evolution is going to be better. All right. So trust the process. Look for those signs from the loved ones who have passed. And do not be afraid to proceed. Thank you to those who tuned in for number 26. If this resonated with you, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. All right, this is the reading for those who pick number nine. And what I'm gonna do is 
Um, from this number nine, I'm just gonna go ahead and do some automatic writing. You will see me write as I am seeing the visions or I am hearing or smelling. Um, this is all using all of my clears to do this reading. And so um, once I have all the writing down, then I will go into the reading a little bit more, okay? All right, those who picked number nine, there was a lot coming through and coming through very, very quickly. And so I tried to capture as much as I could. Um, with you, I kind of even feel like your guides. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. They include your um, people who are close to you who've passed away. They also include an angelic tribe uh, or an angelic group. Um, I was even getting a lot of feminine energy, divine feminine energy, um, mother, mother, and also um, that you are gifted 
Like you know you are gifted. And this could even be dreams or hearing. Okay, hearing. Um, you have a strong foundation. So you may even have some experience with working with crystals, um, feathers. Um, you're a very quick learner, multifaceted, very versatile. That's what makes you such a quick learner. You adapt very well. And for you, it kind of even feels like because everything's happening to you so fast, you kind of want to just learn everything to figure out what is at the end of this life purpose that you're, you're in, that you're spiritual and your higher self pursued um, your purpose. And so your human self, your ego is wanting to know what is it, what is it that you are supposed to do and getting to it. And for you, it may even feel like there's a reward at the end of your path. And so that's kind of also why your um, you are trying to check in so that you know how much further you need to go when um, really it's it goes on beyond just this lifetime. You feel like this snippet is very short um, in terms of the physical world, yet you have to understand and what your guides are also telling you is that the physical is very temporary, but just remember your conscious and your and everything having to do with the spirit is infinite. It's infinite. And so I'm have I'm getting a very strong feeling that you have a strong soul tribe, soul family, soul team. Um, you know to the depth of your soul in and out. Um, even though sometimes you may forget it, you always come back to it. You always come back to it and it's there and it's clear and you don't have to question it. You don't have to um, doubt it. You don't have to second guess it. You just know that it's there. And so at this point in your soul journey, it's really about slowing down a bit, slowing down a bit and um, taking time to just embrace the moment, be present, be grounded is what I'm getting. Be present, be grounded. And so you are a gifted person. And if you're too often in your head trying to figure out uh, what everything else, how everything else is functioning spiritually, you sometimes forget that you are, you have a body. You have a body and you have to take care of that body too by staying focused and staying grounded. So um, something that also came up is a group of women. Like for some reason, I just got the sense of this group of women surrounding you, um, nurturing you. Like you are their, um, you are their daughters. It, it's not just one particular person who calls you their daughter. Everybody calls you their daughter, okay? Their daughter or their son. Um, I'm kind of even getting the sense that you knew you were gifted from a very, very early age. And um, you knew how to use those gifts to help others. Um, and so you've been on this path for a very, very long time and the fact that you feel like this lifetime is short it makes sense why you in your childhood you knew very early on that you were gifted because and essentially it was like you took in some of your knowledge from your past life into this life to continue continue the work and so you don't see it as um, a gap in between your different lives it's a continuation so you may have been, even been a person where early on in your childhood you told you you told your biological mother like you had these gifts and she didn't know how to how to take it and so that's kind of what I'm getting that is what I'm getting um, 
So yeah, so people who picked number nine, this is your writing reading. You can take a um, snapshot of this. This is very quick writing. It's not intended to be legible. So if you want to take a picture of it and try to make out what I wrote, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, and if this resonated with you, thank you so much for tuning in. Feel free to leave a comment down below if it resonated with you. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thank you. All right, so this reading is for people who picked number 10. This is your reading. And what I'm gonna do is for my automatic writings, I just go ahead and I start writing. And when it's about time or how I feel that it's ready to start speaking about the, the writing, I will do so, okay? Okay, number 10, I am just going to start here. So some of the things that I am coming across is um, the letter C came up, challenging, struggle, skull, rebirth, purging, hardship, uh, one guide, it's a strong guide, it's always been with you. And, and uh, I'm seeing protection, very protective. You've been doing a lot of shadow work. And so at this moment, um, you are struggling between um, staying in this comfort of working with your shadow self and light. And so you also have a flame that's flickering a flame that's flickering that's helping you keep the faith and be hopeful um you are i'm kind of getting the feeling like you are very close to giving up but i keep getting it's okay it's okay it's okay light 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 and um send to light remember that send to light whatever is not yours send it to light deliver it back to the light deliver it to the light to transform to find to return it to um return it to light to allow it to find its way back to its healing everything needs healing your shadow work is constantly in healing and so remember you don't have to stay in that in that area you don't have to stay in that level to do healing to feel comfortable it's not okay to feel comfortable feeling feeling hurt because we have to remember hurt people 
hurt others and self if that is something that you truly do not believe beware beware that um constantly situating yourself in this mindset and this thought can be harmful to you and others and so if that's something that you truly believe is not what your purpose is find ways to pull yourself out of it turn that 10 into 11 okay turn that 10 into 11 and call upon the angelic light call upon the angelic light to assist you in this healing in your shadow work remember light 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 allow those clouds to separate to let the angelic light into your heart into your soul to do that deep healing this healing has been um has been rough but know that it gets better know that it gets better protect yourself in gold light in the gold light of the angels to assist you on this on this journey that you are in okay um yeah and i'm thinking in my in in what i'm seeing here too angel aura light work with aura angel aura angel aura quartz that's what it was angel aura quartz or is that aqua angel aqua aura quartz it's one of those work with that um try not to stay so much in your shadow work embrace it but allow it to heal transmute that 10 into an 11 an 11 call on the light of the angel to assist you in your healing allow those other guides allow those other guides to assist you work collaboratively work collaboratively in that light okay so those who picked 10 or now we have transmuted it to 11 this is your reading thank you so much for tuning in i hope this resonated with you um if this resonated with you, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. Alright, this reading is for those who pick number three. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some writing and then once I'm done with the writing, I will, um, I will start going over some of the things that I found in the writing, okay? <clears throat> and so this is a spiritual check-in for those who picked pile number three.
All right. So, so those for number three. The three is very, very strong for you. Um, all right, the first thing I wrote down is quartz. And then, of course, three, try, surrounded by loving light, trio, charmed, protected, trio, forest, woods, love, coven, good, witch, herbs, healing, nature, um, again, loving light, flame, flame of the eternity, of love, eternity, um, guided by the long, uh, guided by the loving spirit of Gaia, Mother Earth, Gaia, divine, mother, healing, water, cleansing, divination tools and so um this is kind of where i started um getting a more clear picture of um of that and it was um you're at a point where you're also discovering your divination tools and for you what i'm kind of getting the sense of is that you have three main divination tools that are going to be um your tools to work with and so find out what they are and there's so many out there it's just a matter of how you come about doing it and so you may even be someone who is receiving signs and threes. That's kind of when you know, like, it's confirmation. Confirmation that things are going the way that they are going. Confirmation of messages, too. Like, um, they happen in different events, but maybe sequentially in threes. And so an example is maybe you first realize the number when you're going to a Starbucks and a drive-thru and then um, your total comes up and you have like just a singular three, but the three is like significant enough to stick in your mind. And then later on in that day, you're maybe watching TV and you know, there's a dialogue in one of the TV shows that you're watching and there's an emphasis on the three. And then, you know, later on that night, you look, you look at your text messages and, you know, again, that three pops up. And so, and so, um, the third time is a charm for you. Third time is a charm and know that, um, this is confirmation. This is also confirmation for you. And so, signs and threes, triangle, um, uh, foundation triangle formations um something interesting that came up when i was also thinking about this or writing these downs too is um a while ago um i visited my husband's um parents farm and they used to have a whole, a bunch of farm cats and um as we were walking around the farm, there were three main dominant cats that just kept following us. And they're pretty docile, but an interesting thing happened where when we stopped, they would stop and they would make this triangular formation. Um, for example, one would be sitting here, the other one would be sitting here, and the other one would be sitting here. And so, um, and this wasn't anything where we placed them there it was literally they were following us in this formation and when we stopped they stopped and they would sit down and so uh, that was the image that came to mind when i was doing your your reading and so think about that think about the tries think about the triangle um the triangle has a lot of um significance for you at this moment in your spiritual journey and use that um, it could even be that you start purchasing, you know, um, your divination tools and how you're determining them is by threes, you know. It it could literally be that. But, um, again, I don't want you to be too fixated or too obsessed with the number three. Just know that when it comes up, that's confirmation. And so, um, quartz came up and I'm even thinking that you can use quartz. Um, quartz crystals to do some healing work. I myself also use quartz crystals as you can see over here and I have three main quartz crystals that I use called the master um, triads and so look into that. Look into master triads if you're into um, divination and channel channeling. Um, that is something that is definitely worth it for you. Um, so yeah, right now it's just a matter of like, okay, for you, you're like, okay, I know I can communicate with them. How can I do it? What's the most effective way? And it's really up to you to look up what those, 
um, different ways are that's what divination tools are and then once you start perfecting and refining those tools you can start finding ways to help others who are also in need because once you have mastered these things if it is something that you want to do you can start using these tools to help others on their journeys as i am also doing that um for me too it was never a thing where i wanted to I wanted to hold on to these things for myself or these messages to myself because I was always bombarded with feeling other people's energy and bombarded with messages and signs all the time. I didn't know how, uh, how to differentiate between even um, symbols for myself and symbols for others and so or signs and messages for myself and signs and messages for others and so um, this is one way that I'm learning how to hone in on my skills and my gifts to assist others. And that's by, you know, using everything in the book that I've learned, uh, as well as things that kind of just came to me intuitively and um, putting those all together. Because ultimately, how these processes and how these um, ways of channeling and um discovering your spiritual journey it's all part of this collective and um there is no right or wrong way there's no right or wrong way of doing it as long as this is assisting you on your journey and under helping you understand what is going on in your life that is all that matters okay so uh, for those who picked number three for your reading thank you so much for tuning in this is your reading if it resonated with you feel free to comment down below otherwise i will see you in the next video thank you